this challenge of how to resource your business as we come out from the credit crunch is just is, is central and it raises I think very deep questions about uh, uh, our talent systems I mean first of all uh, we know that cost pressures uh, um, that the need to have lean organization is going to be has been and will continue to be a dominant pressure and uh, and we can think quite sensibly how, how, how to, to, to have lean management uh, in a constructive way but of course, uh, two, other, two other performance uh, challenges are innovation. We will have to innovate our way out of this crisis in the long term. And, uh, and customer centricity, I think is a language people would use for that. Now that raises quite deep questions about your talent system. Uh, we use the phrase um, corporate heroes, who your corporate heroes are, by which we mean the job roles on whose performance uh, your business model is going to be uh, uh, totally dependent, very dependent. And uh, uh, in a third of organizations, they would now look and they would say, even before the credit crunch, they would say, the corporate heroes have changed. And the question, the problem we have is that often the line haven't understood this and our talent systems haven't yet picked this up. One of the challenges is um, if we look to the, the public sector and the private sector and we look at the, the things that we might miss or we might overlook um, in the next few years. And I think a lot of this comes down to how, how deep is your uh, knowledge and insight into, into your talent and what it is that has made them talented. Now, if you take this issue of, of, uh, of change in business models and so on, um, We've, we've, we've done some work and, and, and essentially if you ask talent directors what is your system designed to, 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 uh, to identify, it's probably four things. You're going to look at people's skills and competencies, you're going to look at the, what we would call human capital. You're hopefully also going to look at their business model insight, their understanding of the, the, the alternative models that might exist in your sector, their understanding of the organisation issues that will be associated with that. I think we perhaps don't know quite as much about that in HR as we would like to in our talent systems. You're going to look at people's social capital, um, who they know in the nicest sense of the word, uh, the networks they have got, uh, you know, the, the lieutenants they can bring with them to, to, to address the issue, how well they, they will be able to execute the change process. And you're probably also going to look at their, uh, their political capital, their reputational capital, complex political changes in organisations. Now, the issue really is um, uh, if you just focus on one of those bands, a narrow band approach to talent, you, you risk throwing out or ignoring people who have got a lot of very valuable capabilities inside your organisation. And so whatever we do uh, in the next few years, we have to actually both broaden our, um, our search for talent inside the organisation um, and we also have to make sure that we take a very uh, a, a wider, more informed view as to who, what we really mean by talent. The equation is changing. A topical question with this is um, the philosophy you have towards talent. And certainly if you talk to organisations, there are some who will say, uh, by talent we are talking about our management of the top 2%, 5% uh, of the population, handful of senior executives and uh, we use them to shape the organisation. There are others who will say, well, of course, everyone is talent. Public sector, this is an issue for us, because in public sector, historically, that's where we've come from. Everyone is talent. Um, and one of the questions is, which system is best? Now, I think in practice, you end up taking pragmatic judgments. The downside to the everyone is talent view is that all you might do is you simply rebrand human resource management as talent management, but actually nothing really has changed. Now, of course, everyone is talent, and you do have to have a broader view, but uh, we did some work, well, some, some talent directors in, in, in the centre did some work, I, I, I thought a great report um, on boardroom engagement, and their issue really was, what does the board need to know and hear from talent directors? And a very clear message that came from that work was that the board is really interested in almost you know, the, the hands-on people they can touch and the depth of, of, of insight and the quality of judgments you have made about those people. They, then want to, they assume then that your systems are good enough to do all the deeper layers of talent. It's a long way of basically saying, I think, well, a way, a way of thinking about this question is to say, uh, um, you, know, you know, again, you've got, you know, you've got a million pounds to invest, where would you invest it? 
would you invest in the next few years all your talent money in making sure that you have a handful of uh, extremely competent, capable uh, uh, talent who can handle risk, who can handle all the complex issues, and on whose judgments your business and the shape of your business might depend. We put all your money on that in the next few years, or will you put all your money on intermediate levels of talent, first line supervisors, uh, and the skills they need, and so on? We know, of course, you've got to do both. But what happens in change processes is that you make political judgments as to where you put your investment. And I think at the moment, for a short time, it is going to be the quality of the thought process amongst those who have strategic influence on your business. Get that right, and you buy a future for the rest of talent. Uh, so I think in the short term, it will be very much about uh, uh, the immediate executive cadres whose talent needs to be reprofiled.